Thank you, Bonnie. That was wonderful. So grand rising, everyone. I'm uh, so happy to be able to introduce our music and our message today. They're coming to us with uh, the gifts and the, the wisdom and the depth that only these two individuals can bring as they pull, pull it all together. So I want to tell you a little bit about them. Now, I, I, I've known these two people for, oh, 10 years or more, and, um, and they open hearts everywhere they go, and they tickle your mind with the wisdom and the music that, that comes forward. But there's a, there's a little bit more you need to know about um, Reverend Dr. Melissa Felipe and Reverend Z. Egloff. Um, both of them have been longtime students and teachers of this philosophy of consciousness and transformation. They're both ordained ministers with the Centers for Spiritual Living and holding master deg master's degrees from Holmes Institute. Z also holds a master's in spiritual psychology and they did a wonderful job demonstrating that yesterday at our Enneagram uh, workshop. It was a really wonderful opportunity for us to learn more about ourselves and each other. And Melissa has an honorary doctorate for her contributions to the field of New Thought Music. Melissa and Z are the founders of Oh My God, which is an online and traveling ministry. If you are pulling around the back of the lot, you might have saw their traveling home uh, on Facebook. They share their travels all in, up and down the country when they go across the country, up and down the country. It's a, a wonderful travel log. I invite you to check it out. And I also invite you to check out their virtual ministry in their virtual home on ohmygod.com. There's lots of information. You're going to hear ohmygodlife.com. Yes. You need to get the other one, too, so that <laughs> direct people to it. <laughs> But it's ohmygodlife.com, where they offer videos and music and books and classes and more. They speak and perform and facilitate workshops and do services like ours all across the country nationwide. And so without further ado, I would like to bring up Reverend Dr. Melissa Felipe and Reverend Z. Egloff. Reverend Dr. Alice, we're, uh, thank you so much for inviting us back. It's been a couple of years. Uh, okay, so it takes a village to be Melissa and Z, so we would like you to join us on this first song. Are you willing to do that? Okay. Yeah. It's going to be a call and response, and it has words and moves. So we're going we're gonna to review the moves with you. Okay. We're going to clarify. Clarify. So I say it, you say it back. Clarify. Clarify. Magnify. Magnify. And then I say occupy, and you say occupy, occupy your, your faith. faith. Not, not your face, although feel free to occupy your face. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's put those together. We're going to clarify. Clarify. Magnify. Magnify. Occupy. Occupy your faith. And then we're going to glorify. Glorify. Testify. Testify. Fortify. Fortify, fortify your faith. faith. Beautiful. Okay. There's that's also that's part a singing one part. of seventeen. No. No. Okay. There's there's only one other part. Aww. All right. So the other part you're gonna sing with me and it goes fortify. 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 Fortify your faith. Fortify your faith. Fortify. Fortify. You can do a little move on this next one. Fortify. Fortify. <laughs> Fortify your faith. That's it. That's it. You got That's it. That's the chorus. Okay. The awesome band is going to back us up here. When I was a child, a little bitty baby child, I didn't believe in nothing. Faith is for suckers, I told myself. People who are weak, people who need help. But all around me, everyone would say, you gotta believe, you gotta pray. Believe 
what's my word? I started to notice synchronicities and a power beyond what I could see. Next thing I knew, I heard spirits say, here's what you gotta do. Maybe you come here, right? And you feel it, and then you leave, and then someone cuts you off on the freeway, or whatever, right? So we, through our spiritual practice, we fortify our faith, but there are some times when it's harder to feel the love. Do you know what I mean? Love for ourselves, love for others. So what we want to talk about today is those times when it's harder to get there, harder to get to the love, harder to get to knowing the spiritual truth of our magnificence. We each want to share a story about finding the love for ourselves and finding the love for others. How's that sound? Good? All right. Melissa is going to get us started. Thank you, Melissa. You're welcome, Z. Mm -hmm. So have you ever been triggered? No, a lot of denial here. I see how it is. <laughs> no, never. Okay, so my definition for myself of being triggered is when looking from above, from a purely objective viewpoint, the reaction I had is maybe not totally logical. That's a good definition, right? Yeah. Like someone is in front of you at the speedy checkout aisle of 10 items or less, and they have 13 items in their <laughs> basket. Am I the only one that inside my head I'm always counting? <laughs> always. I can't help it. Yeah. And then sometimes I really do. Like I have this whole monologue with them or a conversation with them that I don't think God have allowed anymore. But uh, about the 13 items and like how what are you doing? Counting all of the vegetables as one thing? <laughs> I mean really. So I used to live my whole life like that. Everything triggered me and made me judgmental and angry or miserable. It was great. <laughs> you could say I was trigger happy <laughs> minus the happy. So uh, maybe I was trigger unhappy. Trigger unhappy, that's it. My summary now of all the work I've done in all my years of spiritual path of recovery and 12-step and Centers for Spiritual Living and Toltec stuff, all of those, I have one final summary that is, if we are feeling toxic bad, we are believing a lie. If you are feeling toxic bad, you are believing a lie. 
You can have a thought of a lie and not believe it. You won't go there. Now, I do want to say grief is a separate little island. I like to call it its own little island. You know grief? It like Everyone's experienced grief, right? You all have, you know what that is. <laughs> it has its way with you, whether you give it permission or not. In its timing, which is sometimes random and odd and weird. So that it's got its own little island, grief. My experience, though, of even with grief is that when I really fully allow all the feelings and I am deep in grief, I end up in a grateful space of love for what I have lost. So even that doesn't have that toxic feeling in it when I'm really allowing it. And how we get out of that toxic feeling is we find the lie that we're believing and we replace the lie with the truth. Well, that sounds lovely, doesn't it? And I made it sound so easy, too. It's not that easy. And for some of us, when we're in the lie, we're like, first of all, it is the truth. The lie is the truth. But no, not if you're feeling toxic, bag. And then also it can be really hard. Like, where do I find the truth? I can't find the truth from here, right? If you're down in a pit, kind of hard to see the truth. So here's the thing. The truth is always on the flip side. Always right on the flip side. Years ago, many years ago now, actually, I was doing this. I was touring and doing music all by myself. How sad. Everybody go, oh, <laughs> right? I wasn't, didn't have Z yet. Very sad. So I was traveling around the country, working my little butt off. It was, it was uh, intense and sometimes great. And one time I left town and came on tour for like two weeks or three weeks. And I came home, and this was back in the day before the internet. Yeah, that's how long it was. That's how old I am. Um, I came home to a stack of bank notices in my mail. You know, you know that's not a good thing. It turns out, when I had been briefly home between trips, I did all my bookkeeping like a responsible adult. Only I entered a deposit twice. And then I saw my balance with that entry, that little extra <laughs> deposit that didn't actually happen. And I paid down some debt, because back then I had debt. So I paid extra on this credit card. Only the money wasn't there, right? So when I came home, I found these notices, and I found I had not only had I made this horrible error, there were now $650 of charges from the bank for the bounced, the mess I had made. And now at the time, I have to say, I was in practitioner training. I'd been around here, these teachings, and I'd been in recovery for a long time. I was actually working with a Toltec master, and really, I was, I knew the truth. I knew the truth. But by golly, I kept forgetting it. Money can be a particular trigger for me, especially back then. So I was just stuck, 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 stuck in this triggered, unhappy place. And one day I thought, I'm going to go do this radical transformation meditation that I have that um, I know can shift something, at least make it a, something better <laughs> than this. And I actually told my sweetheart at the time, I'll just be like 10 minutes. That's like what it takes for me to do this. But I came out an hour and a half later, and he was a physician, and he looked, took one look at me and said, are you okay physically? Because you don't look so good. <laughs> and I said, I just realized my mother hates me. To which he said, you're just figuring this out? He said, he, she says horrible stuff to you all the time and not to your siblings. So two weeks later, I was with my best friend and I said to her, you know, I'm still, I'm still in shock. And I said, um, I just realized, you know, that my mom hates me. To which she said, you're just figuring this out? She says horrible stuff to you and not to your siblings. It was like word for word. So in this meditation I had done, I was looking for the lie. And feeling like, of course, I'm, I don't know what the heck it might be, but as I searched my life, I found this lie was hidden under the stories my mother used to tell me. So my mother, when I was growing up, 
This gets better. Don't, don't panic, y'all. It's not going to all be sad. Uh, when I was growing up, my mother used to say to me, you are the best fight I ever lost with your father. See, you all get it right away. <laughs> I heard that all the time when I was growing up, and I didn't realize what it was doing inside of me until I did this meditation. And I thought, gosh, that's not a very nice thing to say. And then there's a lot of other things that she said through the years. And I, I realize now, you know, it wasn't me she didn't want. It was another child, another baby. All those diapers, all that stuff. My dad wasn't doing that stuff. So, you know, we had a good healing later, but... At the time, that was a big deal. And I, I got to see that what was the lie for me that I had come to with that kind of story being told to me over and over is, I do not deserve to be here. I shouldn't be here. I wasn't wanted, except for by my dad, I guess, right? Always, like, on, when you look for the lie, you're going to probably find that it's going to be some version of I am not enough. I am not okay. Mine was, I do not deserve to be here. I should not have come. The good news is I kept doing the meditation. <laughs> I didn't stop there. I kept doing it to find the flip side. On the flip side of that lie, what was the truth? Well, the truth wasn't hard to see if I was willing to find it, that spirit wanted me here. Spirit wanted me here then. That's through my dad and through my mother's caving in and saying, okay, fine. And spirit still wants me here. I mean, I'm a recovering drug addict. I shouldn't be here. Spirit wanted me here and wants me here still. And every breath I take is confirming the evidence that spirit wants me. I see you shaking your head. So I want to remind you, that is the truth for you. You are not a mistake. You are not not enough. You can't not be enough. You're divine. You're made of that stuff. That divine stuff that is everything. That is who and what you are. That is what you are made of. Your very essence. And every breath you take is spirit saying, you, I want you. I want you to stay here in this body right now. Every breath. So you can imagine that since that day of going from I don't deserve to be here to spirit wants me here and wanted me here all along, it changed my life. It was a complete turnaround. And ever since then, my life has gotten better and better and better. I'm still, you know, releasing layers of shame and all that stuff that we all work on forever. But I'm happier. I'm happier and happier. My, one of my mantras for myself is I stand in unapologetic confidence, knowing the truth of my divine nature. And I think of that Verizon guy. You remember those ads? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? So one of the things that I say to myself when I feel like I'm starting to go into a dark, triggered place is I ask myself, can I love me now? Can I love me now? Can you love you now? Yes, yes. The answer is yes, you can. <laughs> There's this quote. We have a couple books. We have four books now, actually, but... One of the things is a daily thing with Z's beautiful cartoons. This is Z's cartooning. Cute, right? Okay. Sometimes I get stuck. When that happens, I may think the solution is a million miles away, but that's not true. Love is always right here, right here. And love can do anything anything. Today, I remember the power of love. 
I remember that I can call upon love to help me in whatever I'm going through. Love can join me if I'm miserable. Love can also join me when I'm happy. Love is always welcome. I welcome love today. What's beautiful for me about my journey with this, looking to the, for the lie, finding the truth on the flip side, is that more and more today, I still get triggered. I react to the world with an emotional experience, but the trigger actually is joy, gratitude, and happiness. So I'm actually trigger happy now. <laughs> Yay. And more and more, that's what I experience, and more and more joy, and more and more things, little tiny things that remind me that I am a miracle, you are a miracle, life is a miracle, everything is a miracle. So my, my invitation to you, our invitation to you this morning is that if you are feeling this toxic badness ever, that you remember to look for the lie and check the flip side and find the truth so that you too can live a trigger happy life. <laughs> Z. Yes. Thank you, Melissa. All right, so we find the lie, we check on the flip side. We find love for ourselves. Now, I wanna take it up a notch and talk about finding love for others. And uh, to do so, I've got a little story I'd like to share with you that I affectionately call the spiritual retreat from hell. <laughs> Would you like to hear it? Okay. So this was about 15 years ago. Melissa and I went to the spiritual retreat. These days we often facilitate them, but this retreat we were attending, the retreat, and I didn't know anyone there except Melissa. So I was feeling a little kind of shy. I'm actually pretty introverted. Um, the first night, we all gathered together. So this was held in a hotel, and there's a conference room where we did all the, the communal gatherings. And so we go to this first night, meet and greet, get to know each other. And it seemed like, you know, it was going pretty well. I should mention that this was a women's retreat. And um, the way I describe myself is gender rich, whole lot of gender going on. Uh, <laughs> My, my pronouns are they, them, or as I like to say, she, I mean they, I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's mostly what I get, yeah. Uh, I was born into the body of a little girl, but the girl category never quite fit, but boy didn't quite fit either, you know? N nowadays, if someone says, are you a boy or a girl, I say, yes. <laughs> or, do I look like I know? Yeah, so. I, I have known this about myself for a really long time, like, like years, decades, for 40, over 40 years. But it took a while for the world to catch up about folks like me. You know, I'm really grateful for the younger generation for giving language to this. You know, like 15 years ago at this retreat, there was no they people like me. You know, non-binary is kind of the general term. So 15 years ago, at this retreat, I was not as comfortable expressing myself and being grounded in who I am, right, as I am now. And so at this retreat, I was a little more like, you know, I mean, I've had like gone to the women's bathroom and they scream and like not in a good way, you know. So I was just worried like, how's this gonna go? But it seemed like, okay, all right, it seems like it's good. Melissa and I go back to our room for the night and Melissa goes right to sleep and I don't always, it sometimes takes me a while to fall asleep, so I'm, I'm lying there and I'm realizing that I'm hearing voices in the next room and as they're talking, because the walls are really thin, I realize, oh, it sounds like it's two women from the retreat and I can hear them talking about, about the retreat and then I realize they're talking about me. It's one voice in particular, and she's saying things like, I don't understand why she has to look like that. And this is a good one. I don't understand why if she hates men, she has to look like one. I'm like, 
okay. Uh, you know, like, like you'd think of things later to say, like I could have yelled through the wall, like, I don't hate guys, I'm part guy myself, you know, but no, no, I didn't, I didn't think of it at the time. We all know that people talk about us, right? Like, it happens. But to actually hear it? Yeah, that's another story. It was like kind of like being kicked in the gut, you know? Now I have to say, I was a good little metaphysician even then, and so I realized like, okay, I came to this retreat, and I was worried about what the other participants might be thinking of me, and here I attracted an experience of finding exactly what one of the other participants thought about me, right? Uh, now, the, the knowledge that consciousness is creative is powerful, and it's very easy to go to like, how did I create this with my consciousness, right? That like heaviness, which I love the idea instead of saying, how can I heal this with my consciousness, right? Because we all know, I know that you all know that we've had things happen to us that seem like the worst possible thing that could happen, which then becomes the best thing. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah? yeah? Okay. So I was trying to just like, I'm just going to stay open. I'm just going to stay open, right? Nevertheless, the next morning, when we had the next morning get together, I'm scanning the room, trying to figure out who had that voice, because that voice was like in my head. I knew the voice. And it was a little problematic, because there was two different women who had that voice, which was a dilemma for me, because now I did not know which one to hate. <laughs> Did I mention that this is a spiritual retreat? Yeah. All right. So at one point, not long, I found out who it was because they were right next to us at the place, right? So we all go back from a break in the retreat or something, and we're there, and we were both outside the rooms. And so I was able to say to them, and it was indeed one of the two women, I was able to say, hey, just so you know, the walls are kind of thin here. So, you know, we can hear everything you're saying, you know. And it was interesting, though. I found it did not bring me the satisfaction that I thought it would to, like, tell her, you know. And also, now that I knew who it was, I found out other things about her. Like, I realized she was a couple decades older than me. So back when she was coming up, there was, like, no gender-rich individuals roaming free, right? She also came from a a conservative religious background, again, none of this, right? So, and I also couldn't help but think, because it still was like on replay in my head about what she had said, right? But pretty much everything she said started with, I don't understand why, dot, 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 right? She just didn't understand. So at some point, we do a spiritual practice where we go within, because this was, after all, a spiritual retreat. And in this place, I was able to connect with love, with the one, the one source, one power that is in and through all of creation, including right here. And so I'm in this place and feeling the truth, feeling that love, and in that place, I think about my little neighbor and what she said, and thinking about to the degree to which she was judging me, that couldn't have felt good. It doesn't feel good. It's why there's all these songs about love still. We all want to feel that, right? Like that's what feels good is to feel love for others. And I was thinking, you know, if she could think about it, like even step back a little, she would see that she wants to love me. The lie was she wants to judge me. The truth was, she wants to love me. And it became like this mantra that I just said again and again, not even more fake, forcing myself to say it, just like, oh, she wants, she wants to love me. She wants to love me. And from that place, it was very easy to forgive her. Not like forgiveness, like, oh, I'm better than you. <laughs> but like, I get it. I get it. I see you, you know? But not only that, there was another layer which is, I wanted to love her. Because I was being judgy about her judgment, which basically made me double judgy. 
<clears throat> which sounds like a particularly bitter flavor of ice cream, right? Like, I'll have two scoops of double judgy, please. Mmm, yeah. So, so I wanted to love her. I did. And not only that, I want to love me. Because it is true. There is, it was no accident that I heard that conversation. I did attract that experience to me because I still had all my own unhealed stuff about me. If I had that experience now, it maybe would sting a little, but it would not have the same reaction. I would just right away go to, she doesn't get it. She doesn't understand, right? And so it was precisely because I had that experience and worked it that I now am who I am now and am totally cool with it. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like I got there and it was an inside job. I never had to go and confront her and talk with her. In this case, it was like I needed to find those lies. I needed to find those lies and then find the truth on the flip side. And it is no accident that I got there with spiritual practice because spiritual practice shines a light on the lies and it guides us to the truth on the flip side. There's a story I love about a guy goes to the doctor and he says, doctor, I hurt all over, everywhere, every place. I'm in pain. And the doctor says, well, can you be a little more like specific? And he says, oh, okay, right here at my temple. Oh, ow, right there, ow. And uh, my elbow, right, ooh, ooh. And uh, my knee, right there, ooh, ah. Doctor says, I think I see what's going on. And they examine him a little bit, and then they go, you have a broken finger. <laughs> so when we look at life through a fractured lens, everything hurts, right? But when we ground ourselves in spiritual practice, we see the truth, we see the love. We find the lies, we check on the flip side, we see the truth about ourselves and we see the truth about others. They want to love you. You want to love them and you want to love you. Because love, love, Love is always on the flip side. And now Melissa's going to do one more thing with you. Please repeat after me. Every breath I take, every breath I take, is evidence that spirit wants me. Is evidence that spirit wants me. I am enough. I am enough. If I forget this truth, if I forget this truth, I look for the lie. I look for the lie. And I check the flip side. And I check the flip side to see the truth. To see the truth. I am loved. I am loved. I love others. I love others. And others love me. And others love me. Even if they don't know it yet. Even if they don't know it yet. They want to love me. They want to love me. And I want to love them. And I want to love them. I stand. I stand. Unapologetically confident. Unapologetically confident. Knowing the truth of my divine nature. Knowing the truth of my divine nature. Because I rock. Because I rock. You rock. You rock. We all rock. We all rock. Because spirit rocks. Because spirit rocks. And so it is. And so it is. Amen. <sighs> Let us pray. I invite you to take a deep breath. Exhale with a sigh. ahead of me love 
blesses my way with the power of life itself it goes forth before me infuses all i do and say energy in and through all of creation and in this moment right here right now I call it love love is the force love is the power love is all that I am that is the truth of everyone here in this room everyone watching at home everyone everywhere we are love and so I speak a word right here right now about the love that we are Claiming and knowing that for each one of us, we allow ourselves to get out of the way and let love do its thing with us. Allowing the love in us as us to find those lies and to transform them into the truth. The only truth. I am so grateful for this transformation. I am grateful that as each of us are transformed into knowing more and more who we are, that this love moves forward effortlessly, easily into everyone we see, everyone we touch, everyone we know, reverberating, emanating love throughout our communities and throughout the entire planet and the universe itself. And with great gratitude, knowing that this is done. That as I say yes, spirit says yes, 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 absolutely yes. And as I release this, if you are in alignment with this prayer, please repeat after me, amen. And so it is. With the power of life itself, it goes for me infuses all I do and say it is love it is Today and every way.